Hi there, and welcome to Money Managers, a user's guide. I'm Nathan Peters. This week, I'd like to do something new and different. Take a request from one of my valued viewers. Steve Brown wrote the following last week in the comments, referring to my initial Billy Gifford American Fund review. Great presentation and thought process. It would be really good to hear your thoughts on the Fundsmith Fund. Keep it coming. First of all, thanks, Steve, for your kind words, and your suggestion was very welcome, as Terry Smith and his Fundsmith Equity Fund is currently the largest fund licensed for sale to retail investors in the UK at £27 billion. Here's the track record. He hasn't lost money in 10 years and has come back from his worst ever drawdown of just over 20% during the COVID pandemic to post an 18% return again in 2020, right in line with his long-term average. This is very impressive, and perhaps even more so as he runs a concentrated portfolio of 30 names and is renowned for never selling, generating low single-digit annual turnover of holdings. His adherence to quality growth philosophy appears to be pure, and he stacks right up with the best investors in the world over the past 10 years. For those interested in a more lengthy discussion of his process and philosophy, I highly recommend the firm's annual meeting video from last month. I'll put a link in the description below. But as regular viewers of this channel know, I'm not one to just swallow a slick story whole. In the rest of the video, I'll try to pick apart what sort of exposures have driven this return, how much is really from stock picking, and explore what sort of environment could potentially pose an even larger problem for the fund than COVID did. Could the unconquerable Terry Smith have a weak spot? Well, let's dig into Venn and find out. So right off the bat, we see that in terms of material factor exposures, Terry seems to have a lot of US dollar exposure in the fund, so he doesn't appear to hedge the currency exposure in his US listed stocks. Equity beta is 0.6, quality factor beta is 0.3, low risk is 0.25, and at the bottom, exposure to value is negative 0.4 beta, reflecting his open distaste for cheap shares. In his recent annual meeting, he proudly showed a couple slides on how he had regularly paid high multiples on new acquisitions over the years on trailing earnings, only to see subsequent earnings growth bring those entry valuations right down to below 10 times. He's very clear on this point, and this long quality growth, short value ex factor exposure, is a cornerstone of the fund. If we move, move lower, we see that stock picking makes up about a third of the risk of the fund. And if we keep going down, we see the return generated from taking these risks. Stock picking handily makes up exactly a third of the return as well. And at an annualized 5.8%, this manager is in truly elite company. And further down, ticking historical three-year slices of time, we see his, this productivity is very consistent, albeit muted recently. Luckily, his short value bias bailed out the fund, as did the strength of equity markets more broadly. So is there a chink in the armor? Terry Smith was asked recently, what are you paranoid about? And he answered that he worried that when the inevitable losses in the fund came, that his clients would give up too easily. COVID gave them a taste of this and they didn't like it. If we look at historical drawdowns, COVID has been really the only test with the fund down over 20%. What if this fund lost 30, 40%? Would investors stick with him? What could such a world look like? Well, Venn has a hypothetical drawdown tool, which gives us all these answers. Taking the current factor exposure of the fund and running them against past market results going back to the mid-1990s. Let's take a look. Setting the drawdown threshold at negative 20%, we see three periods that would have led to a larger drawdown. The GFC, the LTCM Russian ruble crisis of 1998, or the big daddy, the tech wreck of 2000. Venn believes this fund would have lost over 60%, albeit with a wide interval around it. Let's click in. During that period, quality becomes correlated with value and the drawdown lasts five years. I think that would test the patience of even Fundsmith's loyal clientele. Moving lower, Venn even breaks down what would have contributed to the drawdown? 
Here, the report card is unnerving. About a third of that expected drawdown would come from US dollar exposure, a third from the market selling off, makes sense, but over 200% of it would be because the value names that we've established the fund is structurally short, massively outperformed during the period. Good thing the current market environment looks nothing like it did in 2000, right? Or does it? One of my favorite recent charts comes from Drew Dixon at Albert Bridge Capital. He just runs the Russell 1000 growth minus Russell 1000 value, that's US large cap growth minus US large cap value, and overlays the three-year cumulative return charts from 2000 against the current peak of the same indices. Take one look, and I think you'll agree, yes, many things were different then. Interest rates were higher, growth stocks didn't have any earnings, multiples were higher, but you have to admit, now versus then rhymes to an unsettling degree. So there you have it. Terry Smith readily admits that his companies are expensive, but that they have a great future ahead of them and you'll wish you had owned them in five years' time. Maybe, but would it seem prudent as the recovery broadens out and immediate earnings growth returns to fundamentally poorer and more cyclical businesses that you take some of your fun Smith winnings and live in the here and now? Thanks for making it this far with me here on Money Managers, a user's guide. If you find this content useful, please smash that like button Share, subscribe, comment, and remember, use your money manager. Don't let them use you. Thanks.